Langston Hughes, 1964, African American poet. Langston says, there's a dream in the land with his back against the wall. But muddled name and strain this dream is sometimes called. There are those that claim this dream for theirs alone. A sin for which we know they must atone. Unless this dream is shared in common like sunlight and like air, this dream would die for lack of substance anywhere. This dream knows no frontier tongue. It knows no class, no race. But this dream cannot be held in any one locked place. But today, this dream is in battle with its back against the wall. But to save the dream for one, it must be safe for all. About a year ago, we shared a vision with all of you. A vision of rockers taking the very important next step in becoming the sort of institution we see ourselves to be. An institution, rather, that we are called to be. That's an institution in the city for good, walking with those on the margins. In his 90 years on this earth, Mr. Brooks has provided us a powerful example of what genuine love of a community and its people can lead us to do. Though he was never a student, a faculty member, or a staff member here, Mr. Brooks is a consummate example of servant leadership in the Jesuit tradition. This center, a concrete commitment to a faith that does justice, represents being in the city for good in every sense. As a space where the campus community will both celebrate faith and pursue justice, it's only appropriate that it bears the name Alvin Brooks. In Jesuit education, and in particular here at Rockhurst, we talk a lot about the modges. And what the modges really means, or kind of makes us focus on, is that as we go through our life, we continue to need to go deeper into who we are and to what we are about. And that is what this building is going to help us to do here at Rockhurst and also in Kansas City. We're going to be able to go deeper because it's a space that's going to allow faculty and students and community agencies to come together to have creative and dynamic conversations about issues of justice and how we serve those in our city. And not only serve, but how to think critically and reflectively of why we have injustices and how we need to deal with them in our society. But today, you as my friends and my family and witnesses to this sermon, I say, why me, O oh Lord? And let me hear you help me. Why me, O oh Lord? Why me, O oh Lord? Thank you so very much. God bless you.